5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. When it comes to our body, we know that there's a lot of things in our blood and close to our skin or wherever else. There could be bacteria, there could be viruses, there could be fungi somewhere close by, protozoa, parasites, etc. So overall, we remember we had one word which was quite important, that was pathogen. And a pathogen was anything that causes disease. So here, for example, you see flowers, or leaves, sorry, not the flowers, and you can see they have some sort of disease. That was a pathogen which caused a disease. So pathogens cause disease. Now the word pathogen is quite sort of big, it's quite general. Then that pathogen can be divided into other kind of things which cause disease. For example, a bacteria which causes disease is a pathogen. A virus which causes disease, most viruses do cause disease, are pathogens. There's some fungi, not all fungi that cause disease, and they are pathogens. And there's a couple other ones. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to cover all the different things which can be a pathogen. Doesn't mean they have to be. For example, bacteria, many of them aren't pathogens, but the stuff that can be a pathogen, depending on the nature of their living. So if they live in us and cause us disease, then they're going to be a pathogen. If they live in us and don't cause disease, then they're not going to be a pathogen. So it says distinguish between prions, viruses, bacteria, protozoans, fungi, macroparasites, and name one disease caused by each type of pathogen. So this is what we have to cover. We have to cover these different types. The first one is prions. And the prions is a relatively interesting one. Prion is actually a protein. So prions are proteins. And these proteins are non-living, which means they don't self-replicate. That would be one important part when it comes to being living. They don't feed, they don't, they don't consume food. So it's not really a living thing, it's actually non-living, a prions. And they're all the smallest of all the pathogens, so they're really tiny, because they're just, they're just a protein, so they're really tiny. So it says distinguish between prions, so we need to know the differences. And I'm just saying at the moment, prions are non-living, and they're extremely small, the smallest of all the pathogens. Now these proteins are actually interesting, they're produced by our genes, so we produce these ourselves. Now, the, we don't really know what the function of proteins or prions are. We don't really understand them fully yet. But we know that normal prions are harmless. So overall, they're not much of a worry. But there is a problem, because if our gene which creates the actual prion is mutated, that produces an abnormal and infectious prion. So these prions will become problematic. So here, this blue here is our normal one. And this red here is our infectious abnormal one. What will actually happen? These are usually, so prions are usually in our brain. You should also know as well, they're often in our brain. So what will happen is, if this abnormal one, which is turned abnormal for whatever reason, in many cases so genes are, are mal malfunctioning, if that gets close to a normal one, what will actually happen is, the normal one will turn and change the shape. So as you can see here, this was normal, and then it will change the shape to become abnormal as well. So these are actually, that's why they're called infectious, because they will turn the other ones into abnormal ones. And because they're in our brain, and they're usually, they're just there, they don't do too much, they're not a problem. But because if they come abnormal, you're going to have one after the other of them turning abnormal. So you're going to have this guy turn as well, and so will this guy. Eventually, they're all going to be abnormal. And they can actually make our brain become damaged. So now, what they do is they, they'll actually line up when they become abnormal, and they cause these holes. So you can see this is the brain, and there's some massive holes in our brain. And not usually in our brain, but if we have Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, and it's caused by prions, they just basically destroy neurons, nerve cells, and that's why it's called spongy form, because they make, out of our brain, they make us, they make like a sponge. They, they make these holes in our brain. So the disease, because it says you need to know the disease, one you can remember is the Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease, and it was it's caused by prions becoming abnormal, and that can be yeah that can cause paralyzation, that can cause deterioration of normal behavior. It's quite quite a severe disease problem, and it, it can actually be transmitted as well from person to per person. But in most cases, they if you have one of the infectious prions in your body, then you have risk of the other ones turning infectious as well. 
Next, we're going to cover is a virus. The virus is also non-living, just like a prime, so they have that in common. It's non-living because they don't actually replicate themselves. They need to invade a cell to be able to replicate. Now, they're very small. They're bigger than prions, but they're still quite small. They're about 30 to 300 nanometers. That's a bit bigger. They also have, they're encoded a protein coat. So they have like an armor, which is a protein coat. And you, can, you can't see it properly here, actually. You probably can as well. This is the protein coat. But this is a bacteriophage. These ones here, the ones down here, these ones, are the ones which invade bacteria. And these ones on top are the ones which invade our human cells. So these are bacteriophages. They invade bacteria. And these invade our cells. And you can see that they have a pro both, the, both of the cases have a protein coat. That's like their armor, the protein coat. And inside their protein coat is their precious DNA. So there's the DNA. And what they do, a bacteriophage will actually inject so it will inject its DNA into a bacteria cell and thereby control and take over the cell. So it will actually tell the bacteria cell by taking over, it will tell it to produce more of the viruses. Eventually there will be so many viruses inside the bacteria cell that it will burst and out comes all of these, these viruses. So basically a virus takes over, they can't replicate themselves, they have to take over cells and then they take over by telling the cell what to do and they'll produce more viruses and then they'll burst and then more will be infected. Same with this one, this is actually this is actually the HIV virus. That is one disease you can remember because you need to remember a disease, HIV, which causes AIDS. So AIDS is the disease, HIV is a virus. And with a human virus, what they do is they actually, they don't inject, they just go into, the, these are receptors which allows them to go into our cells. So they go into our cells and then take over from there. They don't inject the DNA, they go straight into our cells. But in both cases, they take over and tell the cell what to do. Now remember, they're non-living, they're very small, they have a protein coat. Inside they have our D the DNA and RNA, but they have to invade a cell to be able to actually live and reproduce. An example is the HIV virus. So both of these were the non-living ones. Now I'm going to quickly cover some of the living ones as well. Bacteria. So again, bacteria, you probably heard of the bacteria quite a bit. Most bacteria are actually really no problem at all. There are even some which are beneficial, which we need. Bacteria are prokaryotic cells, which means they're relatively simple. So this is a prokaryotic, prokaryotic cell. They have a cell wall here, which eukaryotic cells don't have. They don't have too many organelles. So they're relatively simple. They reproduce. They don't, they don't have to invade cells, they reproduce by binary fusion, which is an example of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, what that means is they can simply go from one and then double in numbers, go to two, and those two can go to four, so they can actually double the numbers that way. And they're bigger than viruses, they're about 0 0.5 to 100 micrometers. So viruses are nanometers, these are micrometers, so they're bigger. And a example of a disease caused by them is Tetanus, probably one. Tetanus. Now, with these, bacteria don't invade, they don't do any, they, what they do is they produce chemicals in most cases. They produce some kind of toxins which will damage us, right? So, these tetanus, for example, they produce a toxin which damages our nerve cells and makes us spasm. So, bacteria, especially harmful bacteria, not all bacteria, but harmful bacteria will produce toxins which can then causes harm. These protozoan, which are similar to bacteria but different, so bacteria were, the product prokary were a prokaryotic cell, whereas the protozoan are a eukaryotic cell. That means they're a bit more complex. You can see they have, they have more organelles, they have more things inside compared to a prokaryotic cell. That was one of the differences. Also one of the similarities between bacteria and protozoa is they're both unicellular. unicellular which means that both of them only have one cell. So their whole being, organism, is made of one cell. We'll go for fungi, which can be multicellular, but these are unicellular. And pro protozoa also replicate for binary fusion. So they can go from one to two, and that's asexual reproduction. Now they're actually a bit bigger than bacteria, so they're on average 10, between 10 and 500 micrometers, whereas a bacteria is only 0 0.5 to 100 micrometers. And a disease they cause is, for example, malaria. So malaria is caused by a protozoan. 
Now, I'm going to go quickly cover the fungi as well. Now, the fungi, they can be microscopic. For example, yeast is a microscopic, so it's very small. But they can be macroscopic as well. So for example, a mushroom is a fungi. And a mushroom can be seen with your naked eye, so therefore it's macroscopic. Now, how they reproduce, they don't, they don't reproduce for binary fusion. They reproduce for budding or spores. Budding is an example of asexual reproduction. So they can replicate that way. Or for spores, which is an example of sexual reproduction. So they can do both asexual and sexual reproduction. Now they have eukaryotic cells, just like the protozoa. They have eukaryotic cells. But with their eukaryotic cells, they can actually be multicellular. So I mentioned earlier, the yeast are very small. They will be single cellular, unicellular, so only one cell. But as you can see here, we've got one cell, two cells, three cells, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has more than one cell. It's multicellular. Whereas your protozoa and your bacteria were unicellular. Now the disease which is caused by them is, for example, athlete's foot. It's one of the diseases caused by fungi. Most of the diseases caused by fungi are to do with, with your skin or with your nose or with your mouth. Anything which is quite superficial. So before they get deep, they don't get too deep in your body. They're usually sort of on the barriers, skin, nose, mouth. And, and most of them don't cause disease, but some of them do. So athlete's foot be, will be something that is, happens on your toes. Not really dangerous, but it's caused by fungi. Parasites is the last one we have to cover. We have to cover endo and ectoparasites or macroparasites. Macro just means large, so most of the parasites we can see with our naked eye. So macro means large in size. Now what they do, so parasites, they feed off their host. So that, what that means is they get most of the nutrients from their host. For example, a tick, that ugly tick here, actually sucks the blood. And that's how it gets its food. Now they can cause disease. And for example, tapeworm is one that causes disease. So the tapeworm disease, I think it has a scientific name as well. I forgot the scientific name. But tapeworm can cause disease, so it's a tapeworm disease. But many of them don't cause disease, but they, they act as a vector. And what a vector does, it means it helps transmit a disease. And we're going to cover malaria in a second, how that works, with mosquitoes. But they don't cause disease, but they transmit disease. And the example with mosquitoes and malaria transmit disease. These are usually also eukaryotic cells. So I'll quickly go over the differences again and how they're, they're, they're unique. The prions, they're protein, which is probably the only thing, one of them that, which is a pure protein. They can't self-replicate, and they don't consume food. That's why they're non-living. They're the smallest of all the pathogens. They cause, for example, kreutzfeldt jakobs disease, which is a disease of the brain, makes holes in our brains. How they work is they are a protein, which when they become abnormal, can convert other proteins, which are prions, which might be in our brain naturally, but they don't have a function. But then they convert them into the abnormal phase, which means they become dangerous. They can cause kreutzfeldt jakobs disease. Viruses are non-living as well. They're very small, about 30 to 300 nanometers. They have a protein coat. That's, that's what you should remember. They have DNA or, or RNA inside it. And what they do is they inject either a macrophage, bacteriophage, which invades bacteria cells, or the human viruses, which invades our cells directly. Both of them give the DNA to our cells, and that DNA will then tell it to produce more and more viruses, and then eventually that cell bursts, and we have viruses coming out of all over the place and causing us illness. And the example of a disease, because it says name one disease, is AIDS, which is caused by the HIV virus. So that was our viruses. Our bacteria is a prokaryotic cell. So these are our first living things. The other two were non-living. This was living, prokaryotic cell. So it's a relatively simple cell. It reproduces through binary fusion, which means asexual reproduction. They can just duplicate. Size-wise, 0.5 to 100 micrometers. So it's bigger than a viruses. They, an example of disease is tetanus, which causes muscular spasms and neuron damage. The way they work is they produce these chemicals. And these chemicals damage our body. Especially if they're harmful. If they're not harmful, they won't do this. And they're unicellular in nature, which means they make up only one cell is their actual body. Now, protozoa are quite big, so they're bigger than the bacteria, about 10 to 500 micrometers. They also produce for binary fusion, just like the bacteria. But they are a eukaryotic cell, which means they're a bit more complex. The example of disease is the malaria, 
caused by the plasmodium protozoa. And they are also unicellular, which means only one cell makes up their body. The, and also they produce chemicals which generally harm us in some way, like the bacteria. The fungi are either microscopic, like yeast, or macroscopic, like mushrooms. So they can be in between those sizes. They are often multicellular. They can be unicellular, so they, yeast is only made of one cell. Most of them are multicellular, like these ones here. So one of the fungi has many cells. The disease example would be athlete's foot. They usually infect our skin, nose, or mouth, if they do infect us. They can reproduce either asexually for budding or sexually for spores. And yeah, that's sort of for the fungi. For the parasites, we have, they're big in size. I actually forgot to mention, we have ectoparasites. These are ectoparasites. And ecto just means outside, so that means ecto, the ones that live outside. The tick, for example, lives on our skin, so it lives outside. And this would be an endoparasite. Endo means inside. So obviously a tapeworm lives inside of us, therefore it's an endoparasite. So we've got ectom and endoparasites. They feed off the host, which means they get their food off the host. And they can either cause the disease directly, like the tapeworm does, or they can act as a vector, which means they transmit disease, like the mosquito does, which we'll cover in the next video. Those are sort of, you know, some of the gists, and you need to be able to know what is, if we ask now, what is a bacteria compared to a virus, you need to tell the differences and similarities as well. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.